Welcome back to another tutorial as brought to you by the Learn It channel. This is actually a follow up from the last tutorial. If you haven't seen it, there's a link at the top of the screen and also in the description below to see how to use surface modeling to create this instrument cluster or this dashboard right here. This was in response to a user request. And would you know it, I didn't fully understand his initial request. So even though that last tutorial was very successful, it wasn't what the user was actually looking for. So here, let's just talk about it. We've got uh, on our screen right now, we've got the finished product of what we finished with last tutorial. Now, if we go back to our practice dashboard here, you can see, let's go to the right view. You can see that this face or these groups of faces are actually on an angle and they go from an angle right from the front direction here we can just yeah, there they go they're on a slight angle and they go on an angle all the way around and so if we go to where we finished off before all of these faces all these groups of faces are perpendicular to this base face right there so how do we take where we finished off with our previous tutorial of this 90 degree set of faces and how do we make it uh, look like this? Well, let's uh, let's do it. So I'm just gonna go back in time. And again, if you haven't seen that tutorial, I wholeheartedly recommend that you click on uh, the link in the description, follow along, get to this point. Because again, if you look at our timeline right here, we're using surface modeling. And so this is a surface modeling tutorial, but we're gonna take it back to solid modeling and teach you hopefully a new skill. So let's just go back in time right here. We're going to go all the way back to where we thickened. And uh, the next item in our time timeline here is combining. So at this point, we need to use a new tool that we haven't talked about much on this channel, but it's a very useful tool. It's under modify and it is draft. So here it applies a fixed or parting line draft angle to planar faces. We need to select a pull direction, parting tool and faces to draft, then specify the draft angle. So let's get into it. Let's see how it works. First of all, we're going to select this face as our pull direction and then we can select our faces. So if we select this, you can see that we can have control over this particular face. And look at the top surface, it doesn't change direction. It keeps the same top faces here that were in our original model. But the only problem is, is that when we try and bring our model this way, well, our faces disappear. So what's the next best thing? Let's see what happens if we hold down Command or Control on Windows and grab our opposite side of faces. Let's see what happens here. I am going to pull it while well, this does the exact same thing. So what we need to do is use a, a couple skills here to make this easy on our 3D modeling process. So let's uh, escape out of faces. Let's go to this back set of faces first and we can put this draft angle and let's just call it 20 degrees. Let's go back to the exact same command that we just used. And remember the shortcut for this is right click and it's 12 o'clock, repeat draft. So there we go, we're gonna click on that, do the exact same thing, we're gonna pick that face, we're gonna pick this group of faces right there, and we're going to bring this to 15 degrees as well. So let's just go back here, we've got, oh, this is 20 degrees, sorry, and 15 right there. So let's go to 20 and 20. Now we've got this beautiful, a draft angle and again our the, the whole point of using surface modeling is to keep this set of faces the top set of faces here perpendicular to the walls um, if we didn't use surface modeling well this would be a quite a sharp corner right there as shown in the previous tutorial as we wrap around and again i'm using the 3d connection space mouse i, I wholeheartedly recommend them if you're interested there's a link down below but uh, yeah there we go so from this point, we can just take our timeline, we can click and drag to the right and our entire dashboard is finished. It's looking really, really good. Now, what happens if we wanna go back in time and we want to adjust these draft angles? Here we have uh, two tools in our timeline that we'd have to go back, we'd have to adjust the first one first and let's just let's just do it, you know, let's, let's go over here to 35 degrees and and we have to click on the next one, double click, move that to 35 degrees, and we can adjust all this. It just takes some time. 
So this is a perfect example of using our parameters. I have parameters up here as a shortcut. If you do not, just click the drop down menu for modify. Under change parameters, you've got the three dots right there. Click on it. You can pin to toolbar, which this is called your toolbar up at the top. Or you can go to, let's just hover over that again. And our three dots, we could also pin to shortcuts. So where do we find shortcuts? Well, S, S on our keyboard, S for shortcuts. Let's press it. And there we have a design shortcuts. Here I have three shortcuts in there and you can see under extrude. If I go over here to extrude, extrude under create, there we go, pin to shortcuts. So let's go back to modify, change parameters, click on that. We can pin to shortcuts. Now, when we press S, well, would you know it? There we have it, change parameters. So let's go there. And here, let's just put our draft angle as a user parameter. So let's click on that. We're gonna call this our draft angle. And again, uh, my methodology here is I like to separate words by a capital. So you could also do an underscore if you'd like, that's perfectly acceptable, but you just can't do spacing. And as soon as you go to spacing, everything turns red. And anyways, let's go to units and we're going to find our angle and we're going to pick degree very good and here we can just call our draft angle whatever we want 25 degrees let's go okay now let's go back to our timeline we're going to pick these individual and do you know what it, this is 25 degrees it's going to create all sorts of alarms if i click on this one first um, sometimes you, you have to think about what is it going to do right now i've gone to negative 35 so if i tell this particular angle um or sorry, the first angle to go back to 25, everything's gonna mess up on us. Let's just show you what I mean here. I'm gonna go negative draft angle, boom. Everything messes up. We've got a warning because, let's just go undo here. Remember, we've gone to negative 35. If I pick the wrong one in my timeline, well, it's going to bring up that alarm. So which one should I bring up? Well, in this case, it's our second one in the timeline. We can adjust that. We can go draft angle. There we go. Let's take the first one now. We can go negative draft angle. Perfect. And now look at this. This is the brilliant thing about parameters. I'm just going to bring my parameter window off to the side here. Try and do that so you can see your model. A lot of people, they'll bring their parameter window right here and their models behind it and they can't see what's going on. So yeah, just bring your, your window over there, your model off to the bottom left. And let's change our draft angle. Let's go to 15 degrees. There we go. Let's go to 45 degrees. Oh, that's five degrees. Let's go 45. Boom, we get some alarms here with our fillets, but that's okay. Let's see if it still alarms out at 30. Nope. So anyways, yeah, that's the, the benefit about using parameters is we can just, you know, change one parameter in our parameter window. And uh, it works out. We can we can see instantaneous what our model looks like. So if you've learned anything from this tutorial, please comment it down below. Please consider liking and subscribing. You can even become a member. All of that information is in the description below. Thank you for tuning into the Learn It channel. Hope to see you at our next tutorial. Take care.